Pack up the car, grab your flight boarding passes, and pick up your theme park maps because we're about to drop the best Disney World travel tips before you go. Did you know there are secret stairs? Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and today's video is extremely important for anyone who's planning on using some sort of travel for their next Disney World trip. Call me psychic, but I'm pretty sure that includes everybody, even those who've invented teleportation devices. By the way, if you have, please let me know. I am very interested. Now, today we're listing out the essential tips and tricks for flights and road trips and even getting around Disney once you arrive. And who knows, you might even learn a thing or two today about travel that goes beyond your Disney World vacations. Guess you'll have to watch and find out. Secret secrets are no fun, and that's why I'm going to tell you all about the secret stairs of Magic Kingdom. Here's the inside scoop. When you hop aboard the monorail from the Transportation and Ticket Center to reach Magic Kingdom, make sure you find yourself in the right side monorail queue. Then walk all the way to the end of the row, specifically over to gate 12, and as the monorail arrives, aim to be the last one to board, positioning yourself closest to the door. You following me so far? Fantastic. Now, when the doors open upon arrival at Magic Kingdom, take a sharp left and swiftly descend the hidden stairs. Trust me, being the first one down those stairs is going to give you a remarkable head start toward the park gates. So things happen. Sometimes traffic to the airport is awful, or you sleep through your alarm, or you forget something important back home and have to turn around to go get it, or you leave your passport at home like I've done. Anyway, whatever the case may be, sometimes you might just up and miss your flight to Disney World, which really isn't a fantastic way to start off your trip, but it doesn't have to ruin the entire trip. Most major airlines have some sort of same-day flight change rule or contingency that could get you on the next departing flight, sometimes even for free. Flying with United, you can easily change your flight if you've missed your original one. While your new flight must have the same departure and arrival airport as the original, it's got to leave within 24 hours before or after the original flight and it must be operated by United or United Express. Southwest Airlines also has a same-day flight change policy and it's possibly the most lenient of them all. Southwest fares come with no change fees at all, still, thank goodness, and only the potential fare difference will need to be paid if you miss your flight. If you miss your flight on American Airlines, you may be able to change it to another same-day confirmed one for a $60 fee. However, certain ticket types are eligible for a free same-day confirmed flight change, including unrestricted economy, first and business class, active U.S. military personnel and dependents, and Advantage members. And then there's Delta, which will give you similar options for a same-day flight change within 24 hours of your originally scheduled departure time. If a seat is available in your originally purchased fare class, you can change your ticket to a confirmed seat on a new flight for a $75 minimum fee, depending on the ticket type. This means you'll have a confirmed spot on the new flight and won't have to wait around hoping you make it on standby. But if you're a Delta Diamond, Platinum, or Gold Medallion member, same-day confirmed seats are free. Now, a same-day standby option is also available, but again, it's only available if you want to wait for an open seat on a flight that's earlier than your original, which really doesn't help you out if you already missed your flight. Still, good to know regardless. I know that was probably a little bit too much information for everybody, but this is going to help somebody out there. All right, heads up, the best Skyliner cabins in Disney World are the naked ones. Seriously, the naked Skyliner cabins, the ones without the kind of overlay of a character, are the best Skyliner cabins to be in. It's kind of disappointing when you're directed to your gondola and it doesn't have a cute Disney character displayed across the front because I'm always excited about getting like Peter Pan or Monsters, Inc. But the plain gondolas actually have the clearest window views. Nope, your views won't be bad in a character wrapped one, but they will be tinted and not as picturesque as the bare naked ones. You're not going to get really good pictures out of those overlay cabins. Now, speaking of bare naked, if anybody knows the bare naked ladies, I would love to meet them. Please let me know. All right, next we are talking about the beast that is Fort Wilderness Transpo. I love you, Fort Wilderness. So when I say this, I'm saying this while holding your hand. You have the most confusing resort layout ever. When it comes to Fort Wilderness bus routes, there are three color lines that'll take you to different sections of the resort, purple, orange, and yellow. Now, every line starts and finishes at the Settlement Depot and the Outpost Depot, but the routes themselves will wind around different routes to reach different cabin areas and sections. So while the purple line might take you closer to the recreational areas where you can shoot some b-ball or take a dip in the leisure pools, the yellow and orange lines may take you to the meadows where you'll find a lot of the resort's main amenities, like rental services and the metal feature pool and sundry shops. 
It's a doozy for sure. I lived in New York City for five years and I could figure out the subway system a lot easier than I can figure this out. And it's even more of a doozy when they decide to switch up the color routes, which they've been known to do on occasion. That's why several guests prefer renting golf carts to help them get around this resort. You can rent electric golf carts at the reception outpost between 65 and 85 bucks per day, but advance reservations are highly recommended, which you can make by calling 407-824-2742. You can also try booking one upon your arrival, it's just not a guarantee that there will be any when you get there. Now, if you aren't staying at Fort Wilderness, but you wanna visit, here's how you're gonna get there with Disney transportation. It's kinda confusing, so I wanna make sure we're all clear. If you're coming from your hotel, not a park, you're gonna wanna head to a park first. Take a boat from Magic Kingdom, the most scenic route and the most direct. You'll get dropped off at the settlement right by Hoop to Do Review, which is probably the main reason you're coming to Fort Wilderness if you're not staying there. Take a bus from Magic Kingdom. This can also drop you at the settlement. Or if you're coming from another park, Disney Springs or a water park, you're taking the bus and you'll get dropped off at the other side at the outpost and then you'll need to take the internal buses. Good luck. All right, friends, I've got some Magic Kingdom shortcuts to share with you, and this time I got pictures to go along with them. Kicking off this shortcut list in Frontierland, the Rivers of America Boardwalk has a raised wooden sidewalk that cuts away from the main thoroughfare, making it a great way to get around the crowds during parades or busy times of day. Sometimes Chip and Dale are over there too. Walking all the way around from Frontierland to Adventureland can be a pain, but Disney does help us out here by providing two small shortcuts between the lands. The first is next to Aloha Isle and Frontier Trading Post, and the second is between the Diamond Horseshoe and Skipper Canteen. One of my personal favorite shortcuts is the small bridge that cuts from the front of Adventureland to the backside of the old Christmas shop. This is another great one to take when avoiding the parade crowds. Now don't forget to cut through the Emporium on Main Street USA when the main strip is packed out. All the shops on the left side of the street are connected, so you'll enter through the Emporium and exit through Casey's Corner at the end great tip when it's raining as well. Now, if you're trying to get to Tomorrowland from Main Street USA, you don't need to go all the way through the hub. The fastest way to get there is to cut through Tomorrowland Terrace, which is a restaurant that's never open. Uh, well, it's only open to host fireworks dessert parties. There's a pathway that takes you through the restaurant and then past Tomorrowland's iconic purple wall. Anybody remember the purple wall? It was like years ago, right? Anyway, dumps you out at the land's entrance. And finally, one of the best shortcuts in the park is the one that travels between Storybook Circus and Tomorrowland. Some of you folks who are my age will remember when this was actually between Mickey's Toontown and Tomorrowland. I remember going on trick-or-treat trails back there when Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party was happening. Anyway, you can either enter by the Barnstormer or by Tron Light Cycle Run and walk all the way between the two lands. This is also the easiest way to get to Tomorrowland from the Fantasyland train station. Okay, you need to know what premium gas stations there are on your travel route. Finally, I have found a way to talk about Bucky's in a DFB video. So if you plan on driving to Disney World, your path will more than likely bring you through some areas where you're going to find gas stations with pristine restrooms and top tier car snacks. This could include Wawa, which has nearly 300 locations in just the state of Florida alone, Parker's Kitchen, with most locations strung out through Georgia and South Carolina, Quick Trip, which actually has a baked mac and cheese at several locations that I've heard decent things about. Their freshly brewed tea is also pretty good. And of course, the almighty Bucky's, which is basically the Disney World of gas stations. Bucky's currently has two locations in the state of Florida, one in St. Augustine and one in Daytona Beach. And both locations have hundreds of fuel pumps, super clean restrooms, seasonal Bucky's merch, Bucky's meet and greet opportunities, tons of knickknacks that might help you get all your souvenir shopping done before you even step foot inside the Disney parks and fresh brisket on the board. So to be fair, the brisket here may not be the best you've ever had, especially if you're from an area that specializes in smoked meats, but you might want to try one of the other viral Bucky's snacks and entrees instead, like the fried chicken sandwich, the Texas cheesesteak burrito. Tasty, but not the best option if you're the driver of your vehicle and you're looking for something that's not going to drip cheese all over you. Those beaver chips, which are the house-made potato chips that remind us of the ones you can get at Jolly Holiday over in Disneyland, and the beaver nuggets, which is like a corn puff version of a Cracker Jack. Okay, I'll stop there for now, even though there's plenty of other snacks to choose from here, but just for funsies, go ahead and drop your favorite gas station snack in the comments, whether it be from Bucky's or not. Those of you from the North will hopefully be with me on the sheets made to order, MTO baby. 
Now, we got another stairs tip for ya. It is tempting to just stick with the elevator route when it comes to your resort, but ironically enough, the stairs might actually save you more steps than the elevators. What? Stick with me. Those Disney World hotels are massive, so your room might actually be located at the far end of a Disney hallway and quite a way away from the elevator. And even when you do take the elevator, you're gonna be led into the hotel lobby most of the time. There are some separate elevators once in a while, but most of them take you to the lobby. Meanwhile, that hotel staircase might be a lot closer to your room, and if you take it instead, there's a good chance it'll bypass the lobby and spit you out closer in the direction of the park or toward the resort's transportation pickup. The truth hits hard with this one, especially when it comes to the beach club, because if your room is located toward the end of a hallway over a beach club, you can leave and enter through the far end of the hotel and be a whole lot closer to Epcot's International Gateway versus tracking down the elevator, exiting through the lobby, and doubling your steps to get over to the park. Now, when it comes to MCO lines, I've got to quote the ever famous movie Holes for this one. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. Get it? Have you, have you seen it? It's a good book, too. Anyway, the Orlando International Airport can be a nightmare to navigate, especially when you're already pressed for time trying to catch your flight back home. This is when having TSA pre check can become a lifesaver. The biggest perk to pre check is expedited security at more than 200 airports in the United States. This means your security screening process will be less invasive, so you typically don't have to remove your shoes or your belt or your jacket or your laptop or approved liquids from your luggage. Plus, the pre-check line is often much, much shorter than the regular TSA security line, especially at Orlando Airport. I don't know why, but it's always way shorter to get in the TSA line. There are no age requirements for pre-check either. Now you can apply for TSA pre-check online and we'll have to attend a quick appointment for a background check and fingerprinting. And while the initial cost of this service is 85 bucks per person, that covers a five year long pre-check membership. So once you have it, you don't have to renew it for another five years. Now, if you don't have TSA pre-check, that's okay. There's still a free way you can bypass security lines at Orlando International Airport. MCO Reserve is like a free lightning lane through MCO security. Oh, remember when skipping the line was free in Disney World, like Fast Pass? Those were the days. Now, since this service is reservation-based, the MCO Reserve has its own dedicated lane with security lines that are much shorter than the normal security lines. So here's how you can make reservations for MCO Reserve yourself. First, you need to go to the MCO Reserve website, easy enough. Then you need to enter your flight information and party size, as well as your preferred reservation time, also easy. And finally, after you double check everything and it looks all right to you, you can hit create an appointment. You will then receive an email confirmation of your reserve time in line, which you must show to gain entry into the MCO Reserve queue on the day of your flight. You can book this service online three days before your flight leaves MCO. Just make sure to set a reminder for yourself as reservation times do go quickly, especially around school breaks and holiday season. MCO Reserve is available to book for flights departing 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. with the expedited security line open between 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. Okay, I love this tip. It's a relatively new tip that I just got from one of our DFB Win a Chat with AJ winners that we had going on during our MegaFest week this summer to celebrate DFB's 15 year anniversary. So thanks for this one, Nicole. Now, if you're pushing a wheelchair and you're entering and exiting the Epcot monorail station, that ramp leading up to the station is serious business, but there is an elevator that can help you avoid that ramp altogether. You'll find it right before the ramp's first turn. Just go through the little gate and the elevator is located on your right. Ooh, now we're getting real bougie. Whether your goal is to relax or grab some drinks or be productive or just get away from the throngs of travelers and their luggage, airport lounges can provide you with a brief retreat during your journey. For most airport lounges, you're gonna need to be a part of an airline's premium membership program, much like how the Centurion Lounge that's found in several domestic airports, including JFK and Charlotte and Dallas, requires you to have a Platinum, Business Platinum or Centurion, AKA Black Card, and present a same day boarding pass in order to step inside. But some airport lounges might give you the option to purchase a day pass or a one-time use pass, and I've been seeing this a lot more often lately. Lounge Buddy is a solid service that allows you to preview which lounges in any given airport around the world offer travelers the ability to purchase one-time access. If you find a lounge that looks appealing to you, you can purchase your one-time access directly through their app. 
We talk about our favorite Disney World snacks all the time, but what if you're trying to find out where those snacks are located? We can help with that too. Go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks. We'll not only send you a top 10 list of favorite snacks for each of the parks, but we'll send you some handy dandy snack maps to help you track all those snacks down while you're there. And did I mention it's free? Cause it totally is. Okay, I know we're in a day and age where we can just tap our credit cards against machines or use Apple Pay to make all our purchases for us, but it's still a good idea to have some cold hard cash on you in Disney just in case. Once in a while, Disney's card machines might go down and you'll only be able to pay with cash for the time being. Other times, your card might freak out on you and shut down, especially if your bank thinks all the purchases you're making in Orlando are looking a little sus, which is why it's a good idea to always inform your bank ahead of time before you go on vacation. Just saying. Or you might simply want to strictly use cash for your souvenir purchase because there's just something about visualizing the money leaving your wallet than blindly swiping your funds away and it might help you stick to a souvenir budget better. Typically, I keep at least $200 on hand just to be on the safe side, but you can adjust that amount to create a safety net that works best with your vacation budget. Now, it's not just the security crowds you got to watch out for at Orlando International Airport. It's the rideshare crowds, too, because those can be extremely overwhelming. Think tons of travelers, toes to the curb, lots of honking, and just general chaos overall. While your plane is more than likely going to drop you off at Terminal A or B, it might be worth it if you don't have any check bags to worry about to make an extra trip on the airport tram over to Terminal C to use their rideshare pickup point instead. Terminal C is the baby of the airport terminal family and is most typically used for international flights, meaning the terminal overall is way less busy. Even if you're not using the rideshare, it can be nice to just take a tram over to Terminal C regardless whenever you've got a longer layover at MCO because you can experience a much quieter and less overwhelming atmosphere and there's lots of good food there. They're cute, they're polka dotted, and they're super convenient. Meet the minivans of Disney World. Minivans are a premium rideshare service that provide a direct and private ride from one location to another, strictly around Disney property. Minivans are, quote, powered by the popular rideshare system Lyft, but drivers are longtime experienced cast members and are awesome at what they do. Minivans offer up to two car seats for no extra charge, giving the minivans an advantage over typical Lyfts and Ubers, which charge extra for these add-ons. Plus, the minivan car seats are really nice. They're usually brand new. They are, I believe they're Graco's and super safe, and you don't have to worry about a thing when you put your kids in there. Plus, minivans can haul up to six guests for a flat fee, whereas Lyft and Uber, their lowest tier fees are only up to four passengers. Minivans are often the most useful for pickups and drop-offs for Magic Kingdom, since regular rideshare services will still have to drop you off at the Transportation and Ticket Center, which means you'll still have to take another Disney transportation service the rest of the way to the park, while minivans are going to drop you off right at the front gate. So here's how you can book a minivan for your fam. First, you'll need to install the Lyft app on your phone, and when opening the app while on Disney World property, you'll select your destination within the Disney bubble. Then, while confirming your pickup location, choose Select Minivan or Select Access accessible minivan, since minivans are also able to accommodate guests with standard wheelchairs, motorized vehicles, and electric conveyance vehicles for ECVs. Vehicles will appear on a map in the app where you'll be able to see estimates for pickup times. Select the ride you want to hail and meet your minivan at the designated pickup location, also specified in the app. Minivan service is available from 6.30 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. daily. Promise I'm not trying to tell you that you smell. I wouldn't know anyways, I'm on the other side of your screen. This tip is for the families who want to squeeze in one last trip to their resort pool before it's time to head back to the airport. On the last morning of your hotel stay, checkout time will be 11 a.m., but you're still more than welcome to use the pools while you're still there, especially if you don't have to take off till later that evening. You'll just drop off your luggage at Bell Services and they'll hold on to it while you take your final splash. When it's finally time to wrap up your pool day and hit the road, you might not be able to go back to your hotel room for a quick shower, but Disney does have shower facilities located near the feature pools at each of their hotels. You can grab a towel from the pool's supply and head on in. These restrooms should already be stocked with soaps and shampoos, but if you need some because you're not seeing any handy, just stop by the front desk and a cast member can hook you up. While your Disney bus transportation is often the simplest solution to getting around the parks, just sitting around and waiting for those buses can remind you why we live in a minute rice society. What's taking them so long? Time is money in Disney World! 
Well, here's the good news. You can actually track your Disney World bus on the Google Maps app. To start, you'll need to put your starting location and final destination in the app and then select the public transportation tab. Here, it's gonna tell you how long the path will take. From there, click on the route you're interested in to get a full breakdown of what the trip will be like. If you select the bus option from that last screen, it'll take you to a full bus schedule tab. This shows when the Disney buses are expected to arrive at the bus stop throughout the day. But the real kicker is that when you tap on the bus you want to ride, the app is going to track it for you. Sometimes glitchy, but very cool. Okay, this is not something that we've talked about on the channel before, but it is something that I think is really important. I don't know about you, but I have gone through a period of time in my life where I reacted very poorly to turbulence on airplanes, like panic attack kind of situation. I've gotten over that largely now. I still don't like it, but talking to your kids about turbulence and what it is can be very, very helpful because it can be scary, especially if you've never experienced it before. It's like having one of those dreams when you're falling and suddenly jolt awake and your stomach slightly drops and your nerves have the potential of getting all rattled because you're thousands of feet in the air right now. There's no way you want your flight playing like yo-yo with you at a time like this. So if you've got a kid in your group who's never experienced turbulence before, maybe just a nervous flyer, which is totally understandable, been there. Here are some ways to help overcome the jitters when it comes to those little bumps you might hit during your flight. First, remember that turbulence is super normal. There are a couple of ways to think about turbulence. One that's really helped me is it's like being on a speedboat on the water. You're gonna kind of bump over waves now and then and that's expected and that's gonna be normal, but your boat's not gonna sink just because there are waves. And another way to think about it that Bria found on Reddit and she really likes is imagine your plane is moving through jello. While it's gonna jiggle a little, it's not gonna crumble apart or suddenly fall out of the sky. And in the same way, turbulence isn't an anomaly for a flight. And if you're traveling frequently, you got a high chance of experiencing it, at least in little doses, since you'll encounter it whenever you hit a strong wind current. But the pilot knows what they're doing. And if you just ride out the jiggles for a little bit, you should get to where you're going smooth. And two, have entertainment handy for distractions. Keeping yourself calm during turbulence, normal or not, can be easier said than done. So pack distractions to occupy your anxiety in the meantime. Pop in your earbuds and listen to some music or watch a movie or show that you downloaded to your device ahead of time. Play a game on your device, whatever it takes to fill your brain with something other than doom and gloom while things are a bit bumpy. Fidget toys can also be a great way to work out some of that anxious energy when it has no other place to go. One other turbulence tip, there are actually turbulence forecast websites that you can go to where pilots are regularly reporting back where they're experiencing turbulence, where it exists, and you can look at your flight path and see kind of where to expect that turbulence and also see where to expect that turbulence to stop. So that's always really handy for me because I can look at it and be like, well, some other flight just went through this and they're fine. So <laughs> then I'm, you know, then I calm down a little bit. We're probably never going to shut up about having lost Disney's Magical Express back in 2022, which was once Disney's free shuttle service from the Orlando International Airport to the Disney bubble and back again. But the good news is that there still is a shuttle service you can take that replaced the Magical Express. You just have to pay for it now. So here's how you can book the Mirrors Connect via the Mirrors website in just three easy steps. Step one, select your service, either the standard or the express. The express is gonna be more expensive. Step two, provide your ride details, meaning you're gonna input which resort you're gonna need to be dropped off at and picked up from along with your flight details, how many people will be in your travel party, how many bags you're gonna be bringing, and if you'll need wheelchair access on the new shuttle system. And step three, enter your payment information. And voila, you've now secured yourself a ride aboard the magical or I mean the mirrors connect aren't wounds supposed to heal with time because I still miss the magical express now if you want to help alleviate the magical express pain a little bit more links might be able to help out with that not fully but just a little the new links bus route called link 311 serves Disney World via Disney Springs the bus comes every 30 minutes each day from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. and is a super easy way to get from the Orlando Airport over to your vacation destination best part it only costs two dollars each way now it might not be dripping with disney magic and pixie dust or anything but it does have free wi-fi and lots of crisp ac just keep in mind that no credit cards are allowed so you must have cash or be using the lynx paw pass app for your tickets 
Now, the biggest issue with using a Lynx bus instead of the Mirrors Connect or a ride share is that when you arrive to Disney Springs with your luggage, you're not allowed to take all that luggage onto one of Disney World's free buses after that. Then that means you're gonna need to snag a premium Lyft or an Uber if you've got a lot of luggage in tow. Or you can walk on over to your Disney Springs area hotel if you're staying at one nearby. If you're coming for the weekend and you've only got a small personal bag or a backpack with you and that's all, then that's fine. Go ahead and bring it on board the Disney bus with no repercussions. But if you have loads of luggage strolling behind you, then you're gonna have to save for that extra rideshare ride from the Disney Springs area. Now there's a good chance that the souvenirs you accumulate during your Disney World trip will be small little knickknacks like magnets or trading pins or the funny looking trolls from the Norway Pavilion. But there's also a good chance your souvenirs are gonna be a whole lot bulkier. Like if you purchase a large Jim Shore statue, or if you get a blanket, or if you get an oversized stitch plushie. We are not speaking from experience on that. If you're afraid that what you bring to Disney World is gonna be a whole lot lighter than what you leave with, then there are two things you can do to prepare for the extra friends who follow you home. Either A, while you're packing, remember to leave some extra room in your suitcase for future souvenirs. You might also wanna get those clothing compression bags that help your clothes take up way less space inside your luggage. Or B, bring an extra bag with you. This can be an easy hack, especially when you fly with an airline like Southwest, which lets you bring two free check bags with you. Just as long as said check bags don't go past the 50 pounds limit either. Each. Now, I always, I shouldn't say always, I usually travel with a packable duffel bag, which basically collapses down into just a tiny little square. These are perfectly checkable. I've actually checked these duffel bags from Tokyo back to Dallas. And so it's, you know, it's perfectly okay to bring them and they fold up so small, so they can very much fit into your suitcase. And then if you happen to buy more stuff than you planned on, you just pull it out, unfold it, and there you go. So let's just say you don't bring a checked bag with you, either to save money or just because you don't want to deal with all the baggage claim hassle. If you've only got one personal item, which you'll stow under your seat, and one carry-on, which you'll put in the overhead compartment that you're taking with you, here are some important things you'll want to pack to help you save as much space as possible in your bags. One, a collapsible water bottle. You can't take bottled water through TSA, but you can bring a water bottle and fill it up after you go through the security line. So having a collapsible water bottle is perfect because when you're not using it, it compresses and doesn't take up very much space in your bag. Two, an electronics organizer. Limited bag space means a higher chance of loose cables and headphones and adapters and chargers getting all tangled up inside your bags. That's why electronic organizers can be a nice way to keep all your cords together without taking up a whole lot of space inside your personal item bag. Three, leak-proof bottles. To make sure you're not met with a mess of spilled liquids when you open your carry-on or personal item, you might need some leak-proof silicone bottles, especially ones that don't surpass that 3.4 ounce travel limit. Fill up those leak-proof travel bottles with any moisturizer or cleanser or other liquids you might need during your trip and shut those lids tight. And while I do trust these bottles to be leak-proof like they claim to be, I also usually put mine in Ziploc bags too, just for extra protection. <laughs> and for a reliable backpack. On budget airlines, you're more than likely to not have the luxury of a free carry-on item. And while you can always pay for a carry-on for your trip, you might instead want to save even more money and stick with just your personal item allowance, especially if you're only taking a weekend getaway to the parks. If that's the case for you, then you'll want to invest in a nice backpack that'll A, stay within the personal bag size limits, which is usually 17 by 10 by 9, and B, have plenty of pockets to help you organize all your stuff, including clothes and toiletries too. Now, think of this as a part two of the point above, because while many of us out there might choose to just bring a carry-on bag and a personal item to avoid those checked baggage fees, your suitcase might be lying to you. Lots of companies make rolling suitcases that they call a carry-on, but unlike the jeans and sisterhood of the traveling pants, one size doesn't automatically fit all. Let's take a look at some carry-on size limits for the most popular airlines out there. Kinda wild how different they can be, right? That's why it's important to look beyond the carry-on label and into the actual dimensions of your luggage. But wait, the lies and deceit don't stop there. Most luggage companies post the measurements of their bags based on the luggage box without measuring things that protrude like handles or straps or wheels. So when you get to the airport, you may be asked to put your carry-on into a measuring device and that device is gonna include wheels and handles in the measurement. If your suitcase doesn't fit, then um, surprise, you'll be forced to check it at the gate for a fee that wasn't in your vacation budget. So make sure you're looking at the full dimensions of those luggage pieces before you buy. Handles and wheels and all. In 2025, getting into the Disney bubble early on the first day of your trip is gonna be more important than ever before. If you're staying at a Disney World hotel in 2025, then you'll receive free tickets to one of Disney World's two water parks to use on your check-in day. Yep, 
I said free. But the catch is you can only use them on your check-in day. Even though your room won't be ready until later on in the afternoon though, you can still drop off your luggage with your resort spell services once you arrive, and you can head straight to the water park to get as much time as you can in the lazy river or speeding down the water slides. But this free perk means that arriving in the Disney bubble sooner rather than later is going to be of the utmost importance on that first day. If you're driving, figure out what time you'll need to wake up and hit the road to make it to the Disney water park right at rope drop. You might not even have to take all your stuff over to your hotel's bell services that morning since you can just keep it in your car instead, unless there are things in your luggage that you don't want getting all nice and toasty during your water park day. It might benefit you to even arrive in or just outside the Orlando area the night before your Disney Resort check-in day, just to make that next morning drive a whole lot easier for you. A similar thing can be said about planning your arrival flight. You might want to fly into the Orlando area and stay in a budget hotel before your Disney Resort check-in day instead of flying into the area the morning of, just in case any flight delays or cancellations happen that could potentially push back your arrival time and eat into that free water park day. Now, what do you need to pack for your water park day before you go? As you're planning on getting to the water park to start your free water park day ASAP, then you're not going to have time to mess around and frantically try to pack a water park bag right when you arrive. So this is what you need to already have in your water park bag so you can just grab it and get over to the park ASAP. Item number one, water shoes. Trust me, you're going to want to protect your feet from the heat of the concrete, as well as the little craters in the concrete too that can cut up your feet real bad after a while. Aqua socks or water shoes are the easiest way to do that, especially since you won't have to take those off in order to ride the water rides like you will any other shoe type that's bulkier, or doesn't have a back strap to it, or exposed zippers. Item number two, sunscreen. You want to apply sunscreen before you get to the water parks, but you also need to keep applying it every couple hours or so to keep from burning to a crisp. Do not forget this. Item number three, refillable water bottles. Stay hydrated. I will rickroll you with this information until it sinks in, and even after it sinks in, I will still rickroll you with this information because you need to stay hydrated. All the theme parks at Disney Springs, during your resort day, all the water parks, just drink the water. Believe me, I have not done it, and it has given me, I've had repercussions for days afterwards, horrible headaches, just energy completely drained. Just drink the water. And item number four, waterproof cases. These are just kind of fun to have on hand if you want to take your phone into the lazy river or the wave pool with you to get some fun pictures and videos, minus the major water damage to your phone. Now you can get these really cheap at a lot of places on Amazon or in big box stores, but if you wait and get it at the water park, it's gonna cost you a lot more. Now we covered a bunch of Magic Kingdom shortcuts earlier, so let's move it right along to Hollywood Studios next. First, let's talk how to get to Galaxy's Edge when you're in the middle of the park, AKA when you're facing Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. For the shortest route, take the path that goes by ABC Commissary. This is gonna lead you past Sci-Fi Dine-In and up near Baseline Tap House, saving you a lot of steps instead of walking all the way around Echo Lake or walking all the way through Toy Story Land. Now, if you're trying to get over to Backlot Express or Star Tours toward the back of the park and avoid massive crowds or bottleneck pathways, then you should hang left by Echo Lake when standing in front of Runaway Railway, right past 50s primetime cafe. Okay, so this next shortcut isn't really a pathway sort of shortcut. It's just a way to keep from waiting in the ride lines more than you want to, minus the lightning lane purchases, which might be your favorite kind of shortcut anyways. In our experience, Hollywood Studios tends to empty out toward the end of the night, and that means ride wait times are going to start dropping significantly. At least we're crossing our fingers that they do. While we can't guarantee wait times will be low every night, I highly suggest checking out Hollywood Studios after dark just to see if those ride wait times have been cut by half. Okay, hopefully car trouble is not in your future, but just in case you run over a pothole and pop a tire or your battery dies on you, or your check engine light starts flashing for reasons unbeknownst to you, then you're gonna want an emergency kit handy as you change that tire yourself or as you wait for a tow truck to come and rescue you. Emergency car kits should be prepped with the essentials like first aid kits and flashlights and jumper cables and tire repair kits and blankets and water bottles and portable fans. But they should also include personal essentials for your own sanity during these trying times. Bria's emergency car kit would include a candy salad with gummy bears and Sour Patch Kids and Nerds gummy clusters, the entire Akatar series, which she's still reading through, so no spoilers, a Gold Peak green tea, which is vastly superior to Gold Peak sweet tea in her opinion, and unfrosted strawberry Pop-Tarts just to drive me up a wall. Thanks, Bria. 
My emergency car kit is gonna include a bunch of portable chargers so that I can listen to hours and hours and hours of British history podcasts. It's probably gonna have frosted cherry Pop-Tarts because frosted Pop-Tarts are the best. It's definitely gonna have a pillow because there will be sleeping and I will probably have Triscuits and Squeezy Cheese. Let us know in the comments what's in your emergency car kit. Now, even if you're planning on going to Disney World shortly after your plane lands or your car parks in your resort lot, comfort is key when traveling, cause when you're having to sit there for hours on end, the last thing you need are tight jeans pressed into your waistline or high ponytails that'll make leaning against the headrest painful or even a tank top that'll be great when you're in the sunshine state, but might be too chilly when your car or plane is blasting that AC on you the whole time. So pack with comfort in mind, cause you can always change into your real vacation clothes once you get to your destination. Also consider wearing easy to slip off shoes if you're planning on flying. If you're not using TSA pre-check, you will have to slip off your shoes to go through security scanning. So it's best to bring something you can slip on and off quickly, like sandals or Crocs or something like that. Oh, and remember to wear socks too, please. Especially if you're like me and creeped out by the idea of your bare feet walking across the airport floor. Nobody needs to see your bare feet in the airport. Nobody needs to see your bare feet in the airplane either. Just a heads up. More shortcuts, more shortcuts, but this time let's head to Animal Kingdom. The first shortcut we gotta talk about, the one between Pandora and Africa. This pathway helps you travel from one land to the other without backtracking to Discovery Island. And on top of it being a great shortcut, it also tends to barely have anybody walking on the path ever. It's wild that nobody knows about this. It's very peaceful. Now, let's say you're trying to get over to Kali River Rapids as quickly as possible before you melt like a pineapple dole whip. Well, from the front of the park, you're going to want to head straight on down to the right side of the Tree of Life as you're facing it. This path is going to save you tons of time. And you can also grab a drink from Drinkwalla on your way to Kali River Rapids for a little extra hydration. Finally, let's talk about the roads less traveled, winding around the Tree of Life. There's honestly no quicker way to get from creature comforts to the adventure outpost in Asia and vice versa than by walking around the Discovery Island trails. Not to mention these trails will get you up close and personal with the park icon itself. They're incredible. I had been visiting Animal Kingdom for several years before I even found these trails, so definitely check them out. They are under-traveled. I know Disney World is a fun place, but it can also be super intimidating, especially for new travelers and kiddos who are overwhelmed by all the stuff they're about to experience for the first time ever. That's why a little positive reinforcement might be nice to have on hand to celebrate at times when your family steps outside the box. For example, if little Timmy is usually a picky eater back home, have some Disney stickers on hand that he can collect in his autograph book for any time he tries something new around the parks. Or if little Annie is terrified of characters but decides to be brave enough to take a few family pictures with Mickey or Minnie or one of the princesses, have little Disney character figurines at the ready that she can collect each time she meets a new friend. Or if Aunt Susan actually wakes up and gets ready on time for rope drop instead of hitting the snooze button like she usually does, it's me, I'm Aunt Susan, treat her to a cup of Joffrey's coffee the next chance you get. So we found this ingenious hack by someone who worked in the flight industry. It's at Durban Milanster on TikTok. Here's how it works. The morning of your flight, text yourself your flight number and include your airline code. For example, if you're flying on American Airlines, you text yourself AA and then your flight number. If you don't know the airline code, a quick Google search will help find it for you. That number that you send yourself will become a clickable link, taking you to a page with all your airline information on it. That includes the gate number, what time your flight leaves, the baggage claim carousel, etc. And what makes this such a clever hack is that it updates in real time. So if something changes with your flight, you'll see it from that very link. You don't have to wait till you get a text or a email or whatever from your airline. What makes it even more useful is that you can text that code or link to whoever's picking you up at the airport so they can stay in the loop with your flight status too. Brilliant. But regardless of how nifty this is, it's always a good idea to also download your airline's app so you can be notified of any issues or changes that might happen with your flight ASAP. Disney's got some great breakfast options across several of their resorts. You've got that fun best friends breakfast over at Ohana and Disney's Polynesian Village Resort, or the character-driven Topolino's Terrace breakfast at Riviera, or even a quick bite of scrambled eggs and biscuits over at the various resort food courts. The problem? 
is time and not having enough of it. Story of my life. Now, if you want to get a head start on your park day, whether it be to use your early theme park entry benefit or arrive at the parks by rope drop, getting breakfast at your hotel might be out of the question since most resort restaurants don't start serving breakfast until 7 or 7.30 a.m. Except for the food courts, but even those don't open till 6.30, which might still be cutting it close if you're trying to catch a park bus right when they're starting that day. Maybe you want to get on flight of passage real soon in Animal Kingdom opens at 8, you're going to have to be waiting for that bus by 6.30. Now the key here is to plan ahead so you don't have to miss out on breakfast altogether, which you're so going to need to help fuel you up and get you all energized in the morning. So here are our best Disney breakfast strategies for you. Strategy one, get something from the grab and go section of your hotel quick service the day before so you're not scrambling to find something the morning of. Get a couple of yogurts and stick them in your hotel fridge. Strategy two, purchase breakfasty items from your gift shop if you're in a pinch since they'll have things like mini donuts and cereal and even cartons of milk. They're just probably going to be more expensive than they would be at your grocery store back home. Speaking of which, strategy three, buy breakfast items like granola bars or Pop-Tarts from your grocery store back home and bring them with you. You might also be able to stop at a grocery store outside of the Disney bubble to pick up some snacks and breakfast food before your vacation really kicks off. And strategy four, this is the easiest one, have groceries delivered to your resort the day before your park visit by using delivery apps like the Kroger Grocery Delivery. So useful and takes the least of your time and effort. Now, you want to know how many free vanilla iced coffees I've received for using my McDonald's app? A lot of free iced coffees. Now, we don't have to talk about how many times I go to McDonald's each month. That is not the point here, and that's not something that we need to discuss. Now, the actual point is that most all fast food locations nowadays have some sort of app with a free reward system that'll help you rack up points and unlock free entrees and sides and drinks. And you know when the best time to use those apps are? When you're on a road trip. Download the fast food apps for restaurants you know you're going to frequent the most often when you're on the road. That way you can rack up the rewards and earn some freebies along the way. Okay, if you're traveling during certain times or between certain locations, your trip may take a bit longer than you'd expected. I know, you don't want to hear that, but I needed to tell you anyways just so you're aware. So here's the deal. If you make it to the park early in the morning and then decide to go back to your hotel before 11 a.m., you'll probably be waiting quite some time for a bus. Early in the day, not many guests are heading back to the room yet, so the number of buses running is much fewer than it will be at midday or into the afternoon. I've actually had a situation where I waited for a bus for a very long time, and finally a cast member called me like a little van to take me back to my hotel. Now we've got an important monorail tip along the same lines that I'm going to explain in just a couple of points so stick around. But first we've got another best shortcuts tip. We are going to Epcot and after this this is the last shortcuts tip. After that I'm cutting you off until we do another video on shortcuts that is. So one shortcut that I absolutely love using takes you right past the Odyssey Pavilion. This pavilion is located partway between Test Track and the Mexico Pavilion so it's the perfect shortcut from World Discovery to World Showcase. You can even cut through the indoors portion of the Odyssey Pavilion for a much needed AC break. And the bathrooms and the baby care center are right there too. A recently opened shortcut at Epcot is Communicor Hall. This building is home to the Mickey and Friends meet and greet but it's also home to a large open indoor event space. And when this space is just open for seating, it's a great cut through from parts of World Nature and World Celebration if you're heading towards Communicor Plaza. Another shortcut that opened more recently is the pathway next to the relatively new Moana meet and greet. This path cuts from Spaceship Earth to World Nature, coming out right next to this meet and greet as well as Journey of Water inspired by Moana and Coral Reef Restaurant. This is a great way to avoid the crowds. And finally, we've got to talk about the friendship boats that go across World Showcase Lagoon. These aren't really a secret, but so many people forget they exist. These boats are the ultimate shortcut because they get you all the way from Canada to Morocco without all the extra steps. If you've got a long flight ahead of you before you reach MCO, then you're probably looking for a surefire way to kill some time. And you know the best way I kill time even outside of plane rides? Doom scrolling on my phone. Hooray for random internet drama I didn't ask to be a part of, but I'm somehow invested in anyways. All right, so maybe you have other hobbies, but either way, if you want some Wi-Fi just to listen to Spotify playlists or message your friends back home, or maybe even getting some last minute work done, so if you'd rather not pay extra for in-flight connectivity, then you might want to look into flying with Delta. Delta flights have started offering free Wi-Fi on a lot of their planes. Not all, but a lot. You will need to become a member of Delta's free 
Sky Miles loyalty program to access this new free benefit, which is a super quick and mostly painless process. Otherwise, passengers will pay a flat fee of $10 for the Wi-Fi, which still isn't that bad. You'll also be able to connect to multiple devices as well, meaning you can mindlessly scroll through TikTok on your phone while your kid watches the latest episode of Bluey. Though you might want to watch Bluey along with them because that show rocks. Hey everyone, Bria here, and boy, do I have a story for you. One of the last times I had a layover in the Atlanta airport post Disney trip, I arrived there fairly late, like around 9.30ish, and I made the mistake of not eating anything for dinner. So thank goodness for airplane Sprite and slightly stale pretzels, am I right? I was going to grab something during my hour long layover, but pretty much everything was closed and the only thing left open was the Wendy's. And you know, usually I'm all for Wendy's, but this Wendy's not only had a line that started stretching around the food court area with lots of other hungry passengers who made the same mistake I did, but the only thing they had left to serve at this Wendy's were plain old hamburgers. So I ended up standing in a 20, 30 plus minute line just to pay for a plain hamburger that I really didn't want because I was that hungry. Whatever your travel schedule looks like during your day, whether you're heading to Disney or back home again, make sure you chisel out some time to dine or at least snack and double check those airport food location times. Because despite you arriving at the airport late, doesn't mean the restaurant and shops are gonna stay open for you. Yes, Bria, I have been in those situations too where it's just been like a desert of non-existent food. So I am with you on that. Okay, now we finally made it to that monorail point that I mentioned earlier. So when you're using the monorail to head to Magic Kingdom, you've got two options. There's the resort monorail, which brings you over to Magic Kingdom, Disney's Contemporary Resort, Polynesian Village, Transportation and Ticket Center, and Grand Floridian. Then there's the express monorail, which takes you directly to and from the Transportation and Ticket Center and Magic Kingdom. While both of these monorails begin operating 30 minutes prior to when Magic Kingdom opens, the express monorail will not start picking people up at the Magic Kingdom until 11 a.m. So those first couple of hours when the parks open, it's just going to drop you off and take off. However, you will still be able to ride the resort monorail back over to the TTC if you need to head out of Magic Kingdom early for whatever reason. You'll just be making a few extra short stops along the way. Now here's a fun statistic for you to mull over. According to a recent survey, 38% of millennials and Gen Zers are now preferring to use travel agents when booking their trips, which is a stark contrast to the 12% of Gen Xers who use traditional travel agents and the 2% of boomers who do it. So why are travel agents experiencing a renaissance amongst the younger generations? I might not be Sherlock Holmes, but I can give you my best educated guess. First of all, travel agents are free and can help you get the best deals on travel, even to a pricey destination like Disney World, especially to a pricey destination like Disney World. Millennials and Gen Z are also still in the workforce, so having a travel agent can save a lot of valuable time. For those looking to book a Disney World trip, getting a travel agent could be one of those no-strings-attached situations that you just can't pass up. Not only can a travel agent score the best deals for you, but if a better deal comes along, they can rebook the trip and refund the savings. Disney World-specific agents, like our friends over at Small World Vacations, also know Disney World like the back of their hand, so they can make the best recommendations on where to stay and where to eat and how to navigate the My Disney experience app and lightning lanes too. So if you want to reach out to our small world vacations friends, I'll link their info in the description for you. So after a super long day of travel where you might have gotten up early for your flight or road trip and spent hours sitting and listening to are we there yet and then finally getting your luggage up to your hotel room, you are more than likely going to be wiped out. But before you fall back on your bed and allow yourself to just lay there like a lump for the rest of the night, which I hope you do because I do, make sure to take inventory of what you've currently got stocked in your room. Specifically, what does your blanket and pillow count look like? Because in some of those rooms with the Murphy beds that you pull down from the wall or maybe those pull-out couches, you might be missing pillows or blankets or sheets, which means you'll need a call down to the resort lobby to request more. Or if you're staying in a Disney hotel room, you can put in a request via your Hey Disney device. All right, let me address the elephant in the room here. Yes, the Disney Skyliner has gotten legitimately stuck before where people needed to be evacuated. But the amount of times that's actually happened since the Skyliner's big debut in 2019 is so rare that I don't even need a full hand of fingers to count them off. 
That being said, the Skyliner does frequently experience momentary delays, but that's not because of mechanical issues or anything. More often than not, it's just to help people who might need a little extra time boarding a gondola before it takes off. So chances are, if you stop moving mid-flight, you'll start moving again shortly. No need to panic. Now, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to feed into your insomniac tendencies, but there are a few more things you're going to want to do before you get some shut-eye on the night leading up to your Disney Park visit. First, charge up your devices. There's no way around it. You're going to need your phone during your park day. Well, there is a way around it. I know you don't have to have your phone, but it certainly helps. And that constant usage of your camera and the My Disney Experience app are going to quickly drain your phone's power. So make sure you charge up your phone and any power banks that you brought along with you. Second, check that weather forecast. Orlando weather can be as unpredictable as Disney telling us they're going to put a Cars Land inside the rivers of America. So you're going to want to make sure to look at the predicted forecast via the AccuWeather app or whatever app you got that you love the night before so you can plan your next day's outfit accordingly and figure out if you need to bring your poncho or an umbrella or an umbrella and a poncho or those shoe covers, you know, all those things. And third, set your alarms. If you're looking to get into the virtual queue for Tiana's Bayou Adventure in Magic Kingdom or Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Epcot, then you're going to need to set your alarms for around 6 or 6.30 a.m. So you can get on the My Disney Experience app, pre-select your party, and be ready to join that queue right when the clock strikes 7. So it's kind of like window shopping, except you're going to be on your web browser or phone scrolling through all the different airline and airport possibilities. I think it might be more fun just to shop for a new shirt, but whatever. Regardless, much like different airlines have different price points, different airports have different prices too. And that means the airport closest to you won't necessarily have better deals than the airport that's say one to two hours out. So don't just check on the price tags across multiple airlines, check multiple airports within your 120 mile radius as well, or 120 miles of where you're going. Apps like Skyscanner, Dollar Flight Club, and Google Flights can help you play the airport comparison game and find out which price tag is going to be the best deal for you. Okay, tell me right now, what is your favorite Disney ride vehicle? Is it the Skyliner gondolas? I know it's not a ride, but it is totally a ride. The train on the Walt Disney World Railroad. Maybe it's the parking lot trams at the end of a long day. Those have been my favorite vehicles several times before. Well, whatever your favorite mode of Disney transportation may be, you can actually celebrate it by picking up a ready to ride t-shirt from dfbstore.com. These shirts not only come in different colors, but also different cuts and sizes so the whole family can match when you're on vacation. These are some of our best sellers. They're super cute. I hope you love them. Okay, I know we talked about airline shopping earlier, but there is another way for you to track down cheaper flight deals too. These flight deals are going to come to you instead of vice versa. Our DFB reporting team is constantly on the hunt for affordable Disney World flights, and we update our readers via the DFB website daily about the deals that we come across. And some of these are just one day. They're only available for one day, and they're really cheap flights. But if you sign up for our free DFB newsletter, we're going to send some of the best flight deals that we find, as well as other Disney vacation discount opportunities, straight to your inbox. You do not have to lift a finger. So if you want to sign up, the link to sign up is in the description down below. It's totally free. Or it should pop up in the corner here. Now, since Blizzard Beach is reopening on November 4th, you're going to need to know how to get there while using Disney's free transportation services, because it's not always as easy as just hopping on a bus and arriving. While each of Disney's all-star resorts, music, movies, and sports, as well as Disney's Coronado Springs Resort offer direct bus transportation to and from Blizzard Beach, you're going to need to take a bus from any other resort over to Animal Kingdom first, then you can transfer to a Blizzard Beach bus from there. I don't know, guys. I'm just the messenger here. According to Disney, bus are Service from Animal Kingdom to Blizzard Beach begins approximately 30 minutes prior to water park opening and ends approximately 60 minutes after water park closing. But if you want to skip all the bus hopping, you can always drive your own vehicle straight over to the park, where it'll be free parking whether you're a Disney hotel guest or not, or you can rent a premium rideshare like Uber, Lyft, or a minivan. Disney World transportation is sorely lacking in the bathroom department, has to be said. While this normally wouldn't seem like a huge issue since you're not in these locations for very long, if there's a transportation delay, which can happen, then you're going to be stuck in an area with no bathrooms, which can be an issue for folks who need quick access to a bathroom or for kids who are just now out of diapers but might still be accident prone. 
Now, things are a little better with the Skyliner. There are bathrooms at or near the Skyliner stations. There are also bathrooms nearby over at the Transportation and Ticket Center, which you can use before you board the monorail or ferry boat. But the only way to really solve this issue at other Disney transportation locations is by making sure you use the restroom before you head to your next stop. So bathroom first, Disney transportation later. So the Disney Skyliner has five different stations. There's one over at Epcot outside the International Gateway, one over at the Riviera, one at Disney's Caribbean Beach, one over at Hollywood Studios, and one between Art of Animation and Pop Century. Now, when the Skyliner first came into existence, I was very confused about all the different lines, and it took me a while to actually figure it out. Now, the two Skyliner stations in the middle for Riviera and Caribbean Beach work a little differently than the others do. For the Riviera station, you'll have the choice of whether you want to step out of the Skyliner or keep riding it over to the next station, which will either be Caribbean Beach or Epcot, depending on which direction you're going. But once you arrive at Caribbean Beach, which holds the Skyliner's main hub, you will have to get off your gondola from wherever you're traveling from and transfer over to a different gondola to take you the rest of the way to where you need to go. This is basically your transfer point. Now, if you wanted to get to Caribbean Beach in the first place, then you're fine. You're already there. But to go anywhere else, you're going to have to get off at the Caribbean Beach station and board another gondola to get to your final destination. So want to use your Disney Resort's valet parking? Here's how it's done. First, you'll need to be staying at one of Disney's deluxe resorts or Coronado Springs Resort. Those are the only ones that have valet parking. Drive up to the motor court area of your resort and lower your window so you can tell that nearby cast member that you're interested in using those valet services. Now, most of the time, you'll be asked to leave the car right where it is, sitting with the keys and the ignition and the engine running. The attendant will ask for your name so that they can write it on a small numbered envelope that'll be used to hold your keys once your car is parked in the lot. Then the attendant will tear off a stub and give it to you as your seat. When you're ready to retrieve your car again, find the valet captain located at the motor court counter and show them your receipt. Now, when I say motor court, it's mostly like that overhang right by the lobby basically right where you enter the resort. Now, the captain will dispatch an attendant to go get your car. Don't forget to budget for tips for these folks. And valet parking will cost you $39 per night. But what's great is that once you pay it once, you don't have to pay it again for the rest of the day. So if you're valet parking at, say, a contemporary resort, and then you drive your car over to Animal Kingdom Lodge, you can valet park there and not pay extra until the 24-hour period has passed. Now, if you've got a valid handicap parking permit, you can get free valet parking at the resorts where it's available if you're staying there or have a dining reservation. Your turn. Add some of your best travel tips down in the comments and keep the conversation going. And don't forget to pick up your free best snacks guide with detailed maps included over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash best snacks. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.